All right, so let's keep going. So Socrates now says he feels inspired to give a better speech. Now, the thing you got to understand about Socrates is he's trying to kind of teach Phaedrus a lesson, and so he's messing with him a little bit. So Socrates is like a super genius, but he pretends he's like a regular dude who doesn't know anything. Um, and so he says to Phaedrus, listen, I, I feel – I didn't think he did a very good job, and I can't remember where I've read better. But you know what? Now that I think about it, I could probably come up with a better speech right now. I and mean, It's not for me because right, I'm stupid. He's not. Um, but he's like, it's not for me, but I, I feel inspired by the gods or something. Something's flowing through me, and I'm going to be able to come up with a better speech than this. Um, so Phaedrus says, that is grand, but never mind where you – Okay, that should be heard, not beard. Um, but never mind where you heard the discourse, whether you heard the discourse or from whom. Let that be a mystery, not to be divulged even at my earnest desire. I mean, he, says, he says, don't, I don't need to know where you heard this from. Only as you say, promise to make another and better oration. An oration is a speech. Um, uh, oration is a speech. Um, that the O-R at the beginning of that word has to do with the mouth. Oral surgery, uh, oral sex, oration, uh, these things all have to do with the mouth and with speaking and the mouth in general. So th this, again, uh, vocabulary should be, if you understand how words work, you can see the connection between oral surgery, oral sex, and oration. They all have to do with the mouth. Um, I'm sure there are other oral arguments is when you're give a, you're going to give a spoken argument, uh, like in court. Um Okay, so so Phaedrus is very, very excited about this um, because he loves speeches. Uh, only, as you say, promise to make another and better oration equal in length and entirely new on the same subject. And I, like the nine archons, those are the leaders of the city, will promise to set up a golden image at Delphi, uh, not, on not only of myself, but of you and as large as life. So he's kind of kidding, but he says, listen, if you do this, I'm going to make a big golden statue of you. He's, he's kidding. He's just, he's so excited. Phaedrus is a young person who loves speeches. I know that seems like a crazy thing to love, but that's that's what he likes. He likes speeches. I myself like books, so you know I feel sympathetic towards Phaedrus. But he's real into speeches. Everybody's got their thing. Some people are into video games. Some people are into sports. You know, some people are into books. Uh, Phaedrus is into uh, speeches. That's what he likes. So he he doesn't care where Socrates is getting this from. Is he being inspired by the gods? Is he reciting something he memorized? Is he made it up right now? Doesn't care. Phaedrus just wants to hear another speech. He loves it. Um. So Socrates says, uh, you, are, you are a dear golden ass if you suppose me to mean that Lysias has missed the mark. I mean, golden ass like a, like a jackass, like, a, like an idiot. Um, if you suppose me to mean that Lysias has altogether missed the mark, and then I can make a speech from which all his arguments are to be excluded. He says, yeah, look, I can't like do a whole speech without repeating. That guy said a lot. I can't do a speech without repeating anything he said. The worst of authors will say something which is to the point, right? So even, even a bad writer like Lysias is going to say some smart thing, so it's going to have to repeat a little bit. Who, for example, can speak on this thesis of yours without praising the discretion of the non-lover and blaming the indiscretion of the lover? Indiscreet is when you talk too much. Discretion is when you stay quiet. We, we've already been over this. So he says, this, like, I'm going to have to repeat them a little bit. These are the commonplaces of the subject with much, with much which must come in. For what else is there to be said, and must therefore be allowed an excuse? The only merit is in the arrangement of them, for there can be none in the invention. But when you leave the commonplaces, then there may be some originality. So he says, listen, it's more about organization. Uh, arrangement is organization. He says, so I, I think I can organize a speech better than this, but I'm going to have to, commonplaces are things everybody talks about. Um, and so he's going to have to do some repeating. Phaedrus says, I admit there is reason in what you say, and I too will be reasonable. And will allow you to start with the premise that the lover is more disordered in his wits than the non-lover. Wits is like your brains. And the person in love is disordered in his brains because he's crazy with love. Um, if what remains you shall make longer and better speech than Lysias and use other arguments, then I say again that statue of you will have beaten gold and take your place by the colossal offerings of the whatever at Olympia. They're just saying I'm going to make a big statue for you because you're awesome. Socrates says how profoundly in earnest is the lover because to tease him, I lay a finger upon his love. So he's joking because Phaedrus is a lover because Phaedrus loves words so much. And if I claim I'm going to do something with words, Phaedrus is going to freak out. And so Phaedrus, you really imagine I'm going to improve upon the ingenuity of Lysias? And Phaedrus says, there I have you as you had me, and you must speak as best you can. Um, 
do not let us exchange to quoque in, fa in farce to compel me to say, as you said to me, I know Socrates as well as I know myself, and he was wanting to, he, and he was wanting to speak, but he gave himself airs. So this is, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but this is basically like, I don't, don't accuse me of doing the same thing. You, you were saying that I was uh, being fancy, and now I don't want to say you're being fancy. Um, to quote is I, I have to look it up again, actually. I've forgotten what it means, but I'm, I'm pretty, he, I think his point is that you said the thing about me and, and don't make me say it as well. Because remember, Socrates was making fun of Phaedrus saying, oh, you're just pretending um, you didn't just memorize this speech. Because um, Phaedrus was like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to repeat it from memory. And he was like, you're trying to trick me. You have it on you. And now Phaedrus thinks Socrates is doing the same thing. To quote is like when you do the same thing as the other guy. So now Socrates is the one being like, oh, I don't know if I can do as good a job. Rather, I would have you consider that from this place, we stir not until you have unbosomed yourself of your speech, right? Meaning it's the speech is in your heart. You got to let it out. For here, we are well alone, and I am stronger, remember, and younger than you. Wherefore, prepend, do not compel me to use violence. He's, he's joking, but he's like, I'm younger and stronger than you are, and I want to hear this speech, so you better give it to me, or I'm a beat you up. But he, he's kidding. And Socrates says, but my sweet features, how ridiculous it, of it would be of me to compete with Lysias in an extempore speech. Extempore is made up on the spot. Um, he is a master in his art, and I am an untaught man. Now, Socrates is untaught. Like, he didn't go to school, but he's the most one of the most brilliant people who's ever lived. Um, but Phaedrus, they don't, Phaedrus doesn't want to talk about this anymore. Phaed, oops, sorry. Phaedrus wants to, uh, wants to get to this big speech. He's excited. He loves speeches, and he wants to hear a good speech. So he says here, we're now at the top of page five, um, you see how matters stand and therefore let there be no more pretenses for indeed I know the word that is irresistible. Then don't say it. Yes, but I will. And my word shall be an oath. I say, or rather swear, but what God shall be witness of my oath? By this plane tree, I swear, unless you repeat the discourse here in the face of this very plane tree, I will never tell you another nor, let ne nor never let you have word of another. Villain I am conquered. The poor lover of discourse has no more to say. So Phaedrus, they're joking, but Phaedrus says to him like, oh, if you don't tell me this big speech you've got, I'm never going to give you another speech again. And he knows that Socrates loves speeches and Phaedrus loves speeches. So he's like threatening him with no more speeches for you. So Socrates says, okay, I'm going to do it. All right. Um, then why are you still at your tricks? I'm not going to play any tricks that uh, you have taken the oath for. I cannot allow myself to be starved because Socrates needs those words. So he's got to give a speech if he's going to get more speeches back. Shall I tell you what I will do? What? I will veil my face and gallop through the discourse as fast as I can. For if I see you, I shall feel ashamed and not know what to say. So Socrates is pretending to be modest or embarrassed. And again, he's just being silly. Um, only go on and you may do anything with you, please. And here we go. This is it. Um, this is Socrates' speech. Socrates' speech, by the way, please notice, quite a bit shorter um, than Lysias' speech. So that will make it certainly easier to deal with. Um, but Socrates is about to give a speech on the same subject. Um, one thing I want you to notice that Socrates is doing here, which is really important. Socrates is trying, so Lysias has said something crazy. Lysias has said, better to get married to a friend of yours than someone in love with you. Socrates is doing something interesting. Remember what I told you from that worksheet? That step one is to talk about what you step one is to talk about what you read, and that step two is to give your opinion. And then I was joking around and I was saying that like if like one way to think about this is step one is to listen to other people, and then step two is to make sure you understand, and then step two is to say what you want to say. What Socrates is doing here is an advanced version of that because he's listened to what Lysias has to say. And now he's going to say the same thing to make sure that he's got it. And then I'll give you a little preview. What's going to happen next? He's going to say the opposite. He's going to give a massive speech about why love is really important. Um, but if step one is listening and part of step one is repeating it back to make sure you understand, right? Like, again, Plato said, and then in other words, you put it in your words. Socrates is doing this. Lysias said something, and now Socrates is going to say it again in his own words before getting to his real opinion. Because step one is listen and repeat what they said to make sure you understood everything, and then you get to your opinion. So Socrates here, Lysias' speech is like what is like we're reading Plato, and Socrates doing the same speech is like he's putting it in other words. He's paraphrasing it to make sure he understands it. All right, pick you up in the next video.